Hey, what is up guys? Marcy here, and this is going to be 10 more things you didn't know about Kane Draft. And to start things off in the second part to this series, I do have another uh, video on this, 10 things you didn't know about Kane Draft. That is going to be in my video description down below. If you haven't already seen that, I just highly recommend you guys check that out if you haven't. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be the first thing you didn't know about Kane Draft. Now, what is it, Leaf? Well, Sam turrets, when they fire, take 50% more damage when they are t um, firing. So as you can see, this hammerhead here is shooting a hammerhead. And I'm going to showcase the damage that these units inflict on SAM turrets and these hubs when they are actively engaged. It is in fact 50% more damage when the SAM turrets are in combat. So you can see the SAM turrets are taking significantly more damage from these pit bulls when these are shooting down an enemy aircraft. The quad turret SAM hub as well also suffers from this. I believe it's because at one point during Tyrion Wars development the turrets spawned from the ground and they wanted to make them more vulnerable. So yeah, that's going to be the first thing that you guys didn't know about Kane's Wrath or 11th technically if you count the first video I did. Moving on, I want to showcase something that you guys may not know about the Nod MCV, and that it has a special and unique ability to resist an EMP blast. Now, I know some of you may know this or may not, but it's actually a very deliberate ability and it is an ability that has a 10 second duration and it reloads every 30 seconds. So I can go ahead and EMP this MCV and the power will be restored immediately after. You can only resist one EMP unless you wait 30 seconds. So a secondary EMP on that MCV will shut that down. And that is the second thing you guys may or may not know about Kane's Wrath. All right, guys. And the next thing you do know about Kane's Wrath has to do with Sonic emitters. Now, the last time we saw Sonic emitters canceling Iron Storms, but now I've got a real-time test with Sonic emitters versus Sonic emitters. And what is this about, Leaf? Well, it's about making Sonic, Sonic emitters deal less damage to other Sonic emitters. How does one do that? Well, you power down the Sonic emitter. So if I put down a Sonic emitter here and start focusing down his Sonics, you can see the damage is quite a bit less. I want to see him powering up so I can show you a comparable result here. So here we can see a Sonic emitter taking damage. Look how much damage that took off one shot compared to my Sonic emitter there. That's a, a significant difference in damage. I mean, it almost destroyed his Sonic emitter in one shot. Mine is powered down. It's taking significantly less damage. So that is how you can win Sonic versus Sonic emitter fights. Uh, ensure that your Sonic emitters are powered offline. Moving on, we have Wolverines. Now, Wolverines, they have a special and unique ability exclusive to the Wolverine, which is only applicable to infantry usually, and that is it has a cover bonus. So what is cover? Well, cover is a mechanic that exists in Command & Conquer 3, where infantry and yeah, mostly infantry can stick nearby a structure and get a 40% reduction to, in to incoming damage. I have increased this in my own mod, but this applies in the vanilla game as well as mods. And what you'll find is the Wolverine will take some substantially less damage per shot when it's in cover. So if you compare the two health bars here, this was the one that was shot near the barracks. And this one here was shot out of from cover. So that's one way of making the Wolverine better. Another thing you guys may not know about Kane's Wrath is that you can get a full load of Tiberium quicker by manually ordering your harvester to collect Tiberium somewhere in the middle of the Tiberium field or slightly away from the edge Tiberium crystals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this harvester harvest the edge crystals and this one I will harvest in the middle and we'll see which one returns to base sooner. So I'll even give this one a head start and we'll see what happens. Now the, the reason this harvests quicker is because it doesn't have to move 
it's harvesting the crystals around itself and for that reason it can return to base much faster and there you can see it is back to base unloading that Tiberium just because when it's on the spot it's harvesting the Tiberium crystals around itself and it doesn't have to move from crystal to crystal that's why it's quicker and you can eco faster this way the next thing you guys may not know about Cane Draft is that you can space your hammerheads out by doing a pretty simple technique. So all you do is you select the hammerheads or any particular aircraft that you want. And I'm going to assign them to control group number one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on my refinery, press shift on my keyboard and then the number one. And then as you can see, I've selected both my hammerheads and the refinery and I'm going to assign the refinery to group number one and what I want is I want a building to be before my hammerheads and the way you do that is you add another structure so I'm going to click on the next refinery press shift again one and now I've got my refineries in front of the hammerheads I'm going to assign the two refineries and the hammerheads to group number one now it doesn't have to be refineries it can be any structure but in that order it has to be and now what you'll notice is the hammerheads will have a different formation when they're moving so they'll spread out like you can see here hammerheads won't take splash damage when they are moving and when they stop you can see the distance between them is substantial so you're not going to take any splash damage with hammerheads and the next thing i want to show you all while we're here is hammerheads have no ability to target aircraft even though these Hammerheads are garrisoned up with missile squads. I cannot focus my hammerheads down with them. There's no attack cursor to let me do it. So how do I allow hammerheads to um, get that attack cursor over enemy aircraft? Well, all you do, guys, is you select an anti-air unit on the ground. In this case, a pit bull. And then what you want to do is you want to assign it to the same group as the hammerheads. And then now what I can do is I can assign, I can um, focus fire the hammerheads and they will be destroyed. Aircraft can now be targeted by the rocket heads with that trick. In the seventh thing you may not have known about Kane Draft is that the hexapod has a special ability not mentioned in the description that buffs infantry in the aura radius of the hexapods recycler system. You can see the decal around this hexapod. That is the radius for the recycler system. But it also has the effect of buffing nearby infantry. The armor is increased. Units take 25% less damage. I've um, got a glow in my mod to visualize this, but it's the same in vanilla just it doesn't have that glow so i'm going to demonstrate the difference here so there's two shots on that shock trooper and two shots on that shock trooper so you can see there that this is the one that um, was not in the buffing radius and if we move over here we can see the health bar is different so there is a, a difference there between the shock troopers the hexapod gives them more armor Coming in at number 8 will be to do with the Armoury. Now the Armoury has a special ability where you can put infantry inside of it and of course the infantry gets healed up and all the lost squad members are replenished. You get the squad back. Now it does take a while for this process to take place as you saw that rifleman took a second or two to get fully healed up in that Armoury. But there is a way to quicken this process to accelerate it and it works well especially with the zone troopers so and the way you do that is you use the waypoint so i'm going to waypoint my zone trooper into the armory and then back out again and you can see that it skips that waiting time it replaces the dead squad members only they don't come back at full health but this synergizes really well with the zone troopers because zone troopers when upgraded with power packs uh, heals the squad when idle and those squads are already back to full health so that can work really well with zone troopers and the zone raider squads 
In the ninth thing you guys may not know about Kane's Wrath has to do with the mothership. Now, this is a very fascinating one to me because I have no idea why it's like this. So it doesn't really make much sense if it's in the law. Uh, it could be, but it seems very much deliberate. Anyways, the mothership, when it is destroyed, has an ability where it EMPs all nearby aircraft. So when you destroy this mothership, every aircraft around it will be EMP'd for a duration of 10 seconds. So you can see there, everything is just frozen in place. So you want to be careful when facing an enemy mothership because, well, you will have your aircraft EMP'd. Though that's better than having your base destroyed by that mothership's powerful chain reaction. In the 10th and final thing you guys probably didn't know about Kane's Draft has to do with Awakened. Now, Awakened, you can make them with the Nod Faction, or you can produce them with the Might of Kane Faction out of the barracks. By the way, that's a quick and easy way of getting Awakened squads. By force behind the ground, a bunch of militants with a spectre. So these five Awakened here were created by the Redemption Support Power, and these five were produced by the Hand of Nod here. Now, I'm going to show you that there are differences with both of these Awakened squads. Even though they look the same and they're named the same, they are anything but the same. The stats file says differently. For one, these Awakened here have twice the health of the Might of Cain Awakened. They also have a faster EMP throw range, so they can um, throw their EMP a little bit faster and at a further range compared to the Mock Awakened. But the drawback is these ones are move also a little bit slower. I think it's a copy-paste error by EA. Nonetheless, I'm going to show you all just how big of a difference this is. So that's one shot on this Awakened squad from the Laser Venom. And that's one shot on the Mark of Cain Awakened with the Venom, with laser capacitors. So this one here is the Nod Awakened squad. And this one here, the Mart of Cain. A big difference in the damage inflicted. Now, I'm also going to show you all the EMP range as well, because according to the stats file, it is also more. So we know that this one here is the Mart of Cain Awaken, and we're going to throw an EMP at this war factory and see what happens. So it's about the same. So I guess the main thing is the speed of the units and the health that they have. As you can see, the Mark Decane Awaken moves a little bit faster than the Nod. Nonetheless, though, that is the 10 things you did not know about Kane Draft in this episode. I may have a third episode, but I'll need to dig up for more facts, for more interesting details. A big thanks to one person in my YouTube comments uh, section for telling me about this very last thing. Go ahead. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed these 10 things and this video. It took me a while to put together that intro. If you did, then don't forget to hit the like button. I really do appreciate that. And subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already to stay notified of uploads such as this one. So yeah, guys, this is me, Master Leaf. Peace out.